reckless. I wish you to return. It won't be for long. You'll forget me. Never. I'm not intruding. <laughs> but we had quite despaired, hadn't we, Elizabeth? Yes. Elizabeth. I couldn't have wished for a better homecoming. I must speak with you, Ross. There is nothing to do. You are engaged to Francis. Was there really nothing between us? Is there really nothing between us now? I thought you were dead. What's your name? Demelza Karn. Ross pulled up. I'm in need of a kitchen maid. You'd get food, lodging, proper clothing. It'd be that journey ah. saying I got ideas, but I ain't got ideas. No. I do know me place. This must be the young person that you adopted. I've adopted no one. I was merely offering you the chance to return to your home. That's where you feel you belong. You belong here. Demelza, <laughs> what are you wearing? I found it, sir, in one of the chests in the library. You dare to go rifling through those things? I meant no arm, sir. It's just. You take it off. This minute, you can pack your things and go back to your father. <laughs> After what happened? You thought you would no longer be my servant. Not from choice, sir. You're right. You can no longer be my servant. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God to join together this man and this woman in the holy matrimony. Folks will wonder. Well, not understand. I don't rightly understand. What? How it came to happen, this way. You're not required to understand. You're required to accept it as a fact of life. So it's not to be a secret? Why should it? Melza. Let me introduce you. And you. Do you like me? I could learn to. And I you. Do you admire her? Elizabeth was born to be admired. And I was born to pull turnips. <laughs> You've redeemed me. I am your humble servant. And I love you. And I hope you will have a little love to spare. For what? Our child. Julia Grace Poldark, I baptize thee in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I hear you've been well consoled in my absence. If these are my people, I am ashamed to belong to them. For their ignorance, their, their, their selfishness, their arrogance. And you'll not right any wrongs by drinking and gaming and leaving me to fend for myself at my very first ball. If you behave like this, you'll not come to another. If you behave like this, I'll not want to. You've married into a peculiar family, Demelza. We Poldarks are hasty, sharp-tempered, 
strong in our likes and dislikes. Put on a gown, you'll catch a chill. I'm hot, to she that is cold. What is it? My throat is swollen. You have a rash. They both have it. The symptoms are unmistakable. How bad will it be? If they get through the night, to God. Where's Julia? Where's Julia? But I was not with her. I was. Together we will try to resurrect the fortunes of the pulled out mines. So there is hope. And it will not have been for nothing after all. future looks kinder than we ever expected. Much kinder. You have a son. They come from Trenworth. I know what I have to say will distress you. I have agreed to marry George Warleggan. I'm going to Trenworth. No, well, it's not tonight. I must speak with Elizabeth. Well, you can't. This thing must be stopped. How will you stop it? You can't stop it. Perhaps you don't want me to stop it. Perhaps I don't. And especially not like this. Like what? Whatever it is you intend. How do you know what I intend? How do I know anything, Ross? How do I know you? And yet I think I do. I would never deliberately hurt you. You of all people must know that. Must I, Ross? So I'm to assume that you inflict pain by accident without a second thought? In the moment I admitted there was no thought of you. Or of the pain I might have caused. A it was as if I was possessed. Of course, no fault of yours. Just a, a greater power in you and her, helpless to resist. In a way, yes. Would you like me to throw myself off and draw on a cliff so that you might you might bury me at your own convenience and wed again at your leisure? Oh, the Mauser. It was one night. How long will it take you to forgive me? I don't know, Ross. How long would it take you to forgive me? Does Ross know you're here? Why have you come? I thought was to tell you that I hate you. You've marred my faith. You've broke my marriage. What will you do? I'll take my son. And I'll go back to my father's house. I did not deny that I loved her. Long before I set eyes on you, she was my first. Perfect. Untouchable love. Whereas I am dull, imperfect, and ordinary. Not ordinary, but yes, imperfect. Human. Real. What that night with Elizabeth taught me, and God knows there should have been other ways for me to come to my senses, but my arrogance, my idiocy, has been spectacular. All I can say is, after that night, because of it, I came to see that if you take an idealized love and bring it down to the level of an imperfect one, it isn't the imperfect one which suffers. My true, real, and abiding love is not for her. It's for you. She will never come between us again. There's something I must tell you, Ross. And I fear you will not like it. 
I'm with child again. You're not displeased? Whatever life sends. We can face it. Say good day to your daughter. Miss Clarence pulled out. Where was Dr. Choke? Oh, just all over a fork, it's that friend. I should never have let him come. I should have foreseen the consequences. Oh, could you? I agree. How could I foresee that a month ago today I'd be a free man? How could your husband foresee that in freeing his friend, he'd liberate a man he'd never met? Shall you return to the Navy? Once my eyes have mended. The fault is entirely my own for scribbling away in semi-darkness. Letters home? Sketches. You were sketching today. May I show you? I'm no Leonardo. But you are surely Mona Lisa. The woman I love more than life is married to the man to whom I owe my life. And now I'm going away, I can't bear the thought of losing her. How can you lose what you've never had? Had her company. Her conversation. The sound of her voice, the touch of her hand. Do not ask me for a smile. Life is short, but love is long. I wish I could be two people. One, your loving wife, the mother of your children, content in our life as I am and as I ever wish to be. And the other? Someone else. Someone new. You could love another just for a day. Another? Laugh with him, kiss him, love him just for a day without feeling disloyal to the man I truly love. And do you think another would be content with that? I don't know. Would you? I think so. For I know who it is who truly owns my heart. Do you doubt it? Not till tonight. Till I saw you look at him. The way you once looked at me. I will look at you that way again, Ross. Just be patient with me. As I have been patient with you. Can I make it any plainer? I abandoned my squadron in the middle of a war to throw myself at your feet. Can you allow me this? Shall we grant ourselves to each other? So that I may go into the darkness, knowing that I, I once tasted heaven. think of her with affection but I realized that day that she never was and never could be what you are to me you tell me this now because I think perhaps I've taken you for granted assumed you knew what to me was obvious that you are the better part of me I think perhaps I've been guilty of the same I should never have kept things from you you saved my life as you saved mine, long ago. You took me from a dogfight, made me your scullery maid, and then your wife. My only thought was to protect you. Oh, Ross, I've long been indebted to you. If this goes in some way to repay that. My debt to you can never be repaid. For the rest of my life, I will try.
Are you afraid? Of course I'm afraid. We mustn't be. Where's our faith? Where's our gratitude? We're here, we're alive, we have blood in our veins. And the past is gone. Tomorrow doesn't exist. All that matters is now. And we. Two hearts. One beat. Can't ask any more than that. There isn't any more to ask. Ross. You will come back. I swear to you, my love. I will return.